Well, look who comes crawling back. For game four, where Golden Guardians <laughs> takes on FlyQuest. I was like, you're talking about them, not me, right? <laughs> yeah, let's kick things off by rolling through the starting rosters, selecting blue side. It is Golden Guardians. In the top lane, Lolo. In the jungle, Contracts. First time mid in LCS, I believe. Bobshin there, but definitely support Matt and Coach Morissette. And facing them on the red side, it's going to be FlyQuest. In the top lane, we have Flame, Jungle, Santorin. Mid will be going up against Bob Chin is Keen. And bot lane, Wild Turtle, support JJ and Coach St. Vicious. And after finishing eighth in spring, FlyQuest are on the cusp of earning their playoff spot with a win here. Yeah, with Cloud9 as their opponent on Sunday, this is a must win for FlyQuest. Last week, they took down the other bottom two teams, so this should be a steamroll for any team aspiring to play in Oakland and play in the playoffs. And while Golden Guardian season does end this weekend, there's still plenty to play for in the midst of the team's changes. Yeah, the organization has already been making some shifts in structure. We're talking about the coaching staff. And in this weekend, They've actually swapped somebody out. We talked about the mid laner here. They brought up their academy mid laner, Bob Chin, who is from the University of British Columbia, previously two-time university champion. And as a player, you're pushing to end the split on a high note and prove you're worth investing in for the future. And that's the opportunity that Bob Chin has here. So keep in mind, this is still a team of young players that improved from the spring split. Certainly has looked better. And of course, if they win here, they will completely ruin FlyQuest's potential dreams here. So Yeah, because FlyQuest is at that nine wins. 10 wins is the magic number that gets you into playoffs right now. If you get dragged down to nine wins, it means that TSM is tied with you. Echo Fox is tied with you. And you're looking at this position where you aren't safe at all because these teams are going to come crawling up from the bottom. Optic would have to win tomorrow. And then it's also something where they would have nine wins. So you really do have to win this one, kind of put this game away, take care of business. All right, so first six bands are done. Akali, Talia, Gangplank, Heimerdinger, a Kindred, and Aatrox all taken away. And with Nocturne left open with that last band from Heimer, that is a pretty easy lock in there for contracts. And we'll see what they go with here. FlyQuest, I would not be surprised with something like a Quinn. I don't think you'd do it right now, though, because the Nocturne is actually uh, really easy to play into the Quinn. Spell shield away the knockback or play mind games there, and she's also incredibly squishy. Yeah, you think your blind's good? What's yeah. this? <laughs> Pop the nocturne off the end, jump on the uh, somewhat short range mark. Then Trundle do first pick here. I like how they're still throwing respect bands at the Heimerdinger. And FlyQuest, ooh, um, are we replaying the TSM draft? I think um, so. uh, there was not a nocturne available, but I think you're right. So I mean, from their side, for sure. It's, That's true. Like, same, still, like, saying these are the two best that you can take when pretty much everything else is on the table for support. So the Tom Kench to keep Wild Turtle safe. I mean, as far as total utility on Champions, I think Trundle Tom Kench have a lot to offer in almost any comp. So Swyker's keeping things open, but also very versatile here in the early stages of the draft. Ashlow picked up quickly for Deftly. And we'll see if they do want to pair up their support now. Of course, Tom Kench pretty good with and against it. But maybe Matt will take something aggressive here. Pike, not bad. I mean, if Matt wants to style, Matt wants to style. Oh, lots of different choices apparently. Rise, though, gonna be the lock in for Bob Chin, so. Interesting, because Bob Chin is actually mostly, I know him as a LeBlanc player or an assassin player, somebody who likes to get in your face, and he's only won in terms of the second half of Academy. He's only won two games. Both of them were on LeBlanc. He's lost on every other champion in the second half of Academy. So he'll be playing Rise here, and it looks like they're gonna get some more bands to throw Keen's way. But I would expect, like, the Orianna, the Azir, there's a lot that Keen can play, and he always has so much up his sleeve, too, as this player who has such a large champion pool. Yeah, Rai is also not the most threatening laner, so Keen's probably pretty, feeling pretty comfortable with whatever he is offered by Golden Guardians. And I don't think it's more about the lane, and this just kind of came to me where, you know, what TSM was doing is playing to the side lanes. You have the Ash to cover vision and kind of see where the enemy jungler is so you know that you're safe. You just kind of, with less vision in the game with the tracker's knife being removed, value of Ash goes up for split pushers because you don't have enough wards with just the dinky little yellow trinket to cover all your options. So having Ash hawk shots come your way, having the Nocturne to potentially pivot and come to your lane and shadow you so that you can turn a 1v1 into a 2v1, we might be seeing a split push composition here from Golden Guardians. So two support bands there for FlyQuest, so take away Braum and Alistar. Zoe the band on the Golden Guardian side, so take away maybe one of the stronger mid laners left away from Kane. Yeah, that one makes a lot of sense. I forgot that Zoe had actually made it through. Um, and a bit surprised, to be honest, that it did. 
Okay, just banning out two counters to the uh, the cool. rise. And again, like you said, so like Azir, still Oriana, still plenty of options left for Keen, but just take away the ones that maybe make it tougher as that's a Rumble locked in. Yeah, he's played uh, three Rumble games this split. He's won two of them. I gotta go check his history really quickly because it feels like he's just, something happened in week three, or sorry, week seven, where he just started to play Rumble and Flame is now becoming like a, a, a Rumble one trick almost. You know what the funniest part Three about this is as Mundo's locked in for Golden Guardians? Flame has played in a lot of different leagues. Right? He's played in LCK, mm -hmm. he's played in LPL. In the LPL, he was a substitute player for LGD. The main player, the main top player for that team was Akon, who is an extremely famous Rumble player. And we always joked that like, okay, maybe Flame's gonna take some carries, like when he does sub in. And then he would sub in, and every game he would play Rumble. It was insane, like something like seven games in a row, it's just Flame Rumble. So certainly practiced on the champion, and seems like he likes it again. I don't, and I remember there was a time where it was like, Acorn wasn't even playing Rumble. Yeah, right? he wasn't playing Rumble, but Flame got to play Rumble. It was, it was like, like Oh, I, not so rude. Yeah, it was really, it was really awkward, actually. All right, Mundo Rakan and Noah really yeah. still Azir instead for Kane. Yep, the Azir makes a lot of sense here. Pobalter played it earlier. It's actually a decent champion to play into Rise. And it means late game is pretty good. I would say mid game is probably pretty good for FlyQuest here. Golden Guardians, though, you do have to watch that top lane. The Mundo can get a bit out of control. And I like Matt, even though it's a Rakan by himself with no Zaya, still has really good engage range. So a lot of engage from Golden Guardians here. If they see an opportunity to go and they're ahead, they will go. And that's, I think, something straightforward can be very effective. I think the kind of comp you want here, Golden Guardians, don't need to do too much tricky stuff here in the draft to try and take your game. Just, again, pick proactive champions, try and put well on your lanes, and then go from there. For FlyQuest, though, they've shown a lot of strength as a five-man unit. See how they can navigate. Pretty cool comp for them here. Don't see too much Azir plus Rumble, but that's what they've got this time. Yeah, and it's something that, you know, St. Vicious has been very vocal about, you know, his drafts, he cares a lot about them, and the team has been saying that he sets them up and he basically wins every draft on stage for them. They've been very confident in it. And even if you don't, like, quote unquote, objectively or subjectively, I guess would be the, uh, the real term, because you can't objectively win a draft, subjectively win the draft, then that gives you this mental edge where you're like, we have the better composition. If you go into the game believing you have the better composition, you're going to play a little bit uh, harder to those win conditions and not have that little blocker where you're afraid of what's going to happen later. It seems like overall FlyQuest players just really trust each other and yeah. the infrastructure and organization that's been put in place for a team that's had as many base races as they have. It takes a lot of coordination as a five-man unit to get that kind of stuff going. So it might seem silly when they're losing games. It seems so dramatic, but given that everyone pretty much has to be very quickly on the same page for you even get there. I think Flycast have shown a lot of really great team play. We'll see what they can get in here against Golden Guardians with their playoff hopes on the line. Only one game they need to win. This should be the one they look to take. And they picked up a, when you start losing. They picked up a lot of fans, too. I got to say, this team was seventh place last split. Didn't have a postseason, so you kind of lose a lot of momentum, right? Fans aren't seeing you for a few months. And then they come back in. They've made changes. Santorin comes in. They have uh, kind of solidified that Keen is going to be the mid laner when he was playing Academy before. And they brought in JJ. And so kind of three changes brought in St. Vicious as well. A lot of people have picked up a lot of uh, momentum in this team in terms of fandom. All right, well, on that note, we are going to check in with Ovali May, who's got a sideline report. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Morissette. Now, both you and Bob Chin came from Academy, and now you're up here in the LCS. So why is he in today, and how did you help him get here? Yeah, sure. So uh, I just started with the Academy team about a month ago, and uh, Bob is one of the players that I've seen the most potential in. And so uh, I, I know that he's been ready for this for a long time and that he's really excited for this chance. And uh, yeah, I, I know he's going to do great. Perfect. Well, best of luck to you. Back to the casters. And we do know Bob's been certainly excited to get a chance here on the big stage. But tough opponent here in Keen. Yep. And he's gone for a W level one, W auto, just kind of trades. So he'll walk up and auto Keen pretty much every time he can. He will lose the wave shove though, and this will be level two for Keen first. So kind of opted into that. Yes, Bob Chin was really, really kind of he was kind of smurfing in collegiate, to be completely honest. Like I remember him playing, I think, Katarina and like getting penta kills and stuff. Like it was kind of unfair. He was like, too good for collegiate. Two-time champion there. Actually, something that people don't really know is that UCI, uh, after winning one of those championships, went to the International uh, Collegiate Championship and actually won the, uh, basically, Collegiate Worlds for US. It's the only thing we've won. Hey, 
And he's getting really good at winning these other international events I'm starting oh. to hear about. Academy Worlds is looking good. Yeah. You got Collegiate Worlds. I got, I got to change the last thing I said. It's for uh, North America. Sorry. They're hey. from UBC. There you go. I can't. <laughs> That's true. You don't <laughs> anger the Canadians. They, they want it for Canada. They may seem polite, but I just like to make them bad. angry. All right. Bob Schindler getting harassed by Keen. <laughs> Under the turret. Contact's trying to invade. Here's JJ and Wild Turtle. Here's Matt, though, looking for the double knockup. Is going to land it, but that's just trying to save Contract's life. Oh, Ooh, that oh, cue. JJ. Old slap. Oh, that was so good. Contract's went for the smite on the scuttle crab to save his life. If he didn't do that, I'm pretty sure he would have been tongued to death there. All right, we only got red buff. Those like, was that a red to blue invade by. No, okay, Raptors is down. He wasn't that mad. Not that much of a madman. Yeah, Santorin, they're going to take the crab as a result here on the left side. I mean, Santorin just gets to kind of get everything. He's going to get three quadrants of the jungle. It's going to be Santorin hitting level four and a half, and then you're going to have contracts kind of struggling to get to three, and then he's going to struggle to get to four or five, which is like the big area for Nocturne where you just want to go, I hate my early game, I'm going to level six, I want to hard farm, but he doesn't have enough camps to farm. Well, Bob's trying about to feel the pressure. Santorin looking for the gank. Here's Kane sliding over. Bob's though just going to... Time up Tonic out of there. Yeah, but good from Santorin to swap sides now and go to this side. He'll get double scuttles and make sure that Contracts, actually, I don't think Contracts will be able to hit level three here. Actually, though, the Krugs are worth a lot. That's something that uh, I always forget about is that Krugs will actually get you level three if you do a full red side clear. You don't need a scuttle for that. It's going to take them, but of course, it does take quite a while. It does hit level three, though, so correct on your jungle experience number calculations. Yeah, it's the, it's the Rek'Sai route where you go red, rafters, into Krugs, and then you can go gank, and you'll be level three. You don't need a scuttle crap. So pressure here in the bot lane. Definitely a Matt doing a good job here with the Ash and the Rakan. But we'll see if they can kind of do much more here. Nice hook shot there. He's going to spot Santorin, who's maybe looking actually to the bot lane. Mm -hmm. He's looking to pressure here. See if they can actually find at least a flash. Sure. Flash finds match. is like, maybe he didn't like that option too much. Yeah, pretty sure they spotted him. Uh, we'll see, though. That's the ward. And Matt is just bullying here. Yep. They're going to pull him into the... They're forcing, like, a freeze here, too. This is just cool. Maybe even cancels this back. Yeah, Matt yeah. gonna take a tower hit for it. Uh, worth. Especially since there's no teleport on Wild Turtle. A lot of the time there's a TP that you'll have on your AD carry. Just like that. And he misses the cannon minion. Unlucky. Matt didn't. Coin popped out, so he takes <laughs> that one off the ground before completing his recall. So definitely straight back to lane. Bam steps it early. He's trying to farm through these early levels. And Santorin may be checking in mid again. There is a control ward here he can't clear out. So expecting the push here of Kane is just going to let that happen. And he's just trying to help him push. And he's actually going to take a decent amount of damage here. Has half HP on the jungler. That's going to allow Contracts uh, a bit of pressure here. He's going to take two of his camps and not really have to worry about Santorin, who's 20 CS up right now. What's the flame looking good? Clear. 20 CS clear of Roller almost. Yeah, when you know that the Nocturne is this little itty baby Nocturne that's not going to hit six anytime soon, you get the pressure, you get the push up. So he gets to kind of own the matchup. It's kind of what happened in the Optic game where Acadian was spotted on Vision. They knew that this Gragas was topside. You get to pressure the matchup. So he doesn't have to worry about the Mundo being aggressive on him when he pushes past the halfway point of the lane. Yeah, he's actually two levels down right now. I imagine that will change pretty quickly, but Santorin's going to use this to try and take even more camps out of Contract's oh, jungle. Oh, no, they're going to cycle his jungle. Oh, boy. All right, so for those of you at home who maybe don't understand what Zarin said, why is this so bad? This is bad because if he doesn't get these camps, it just takes him away, and it means that he's kind of flipped the experience. It's five to three. Contracts needs one little wolf to try and get something happening. Actually dueling okay with the red smite and some of the early ability, but there's an ult is good. First blood over to Santorin. Contracts not catching breaks today. Don't need anybody to explain why that one was bad. No. <laughs> so he comes in. I think Santorin's actually going to hit six here in a second. Uh, off this, uh, it was almost there. He's very close. So after he completes that, he'll back. And they even took the scuttle on the bottom side, the bottom lane of FlyQuest. So they're actually just destroying Contract. All right, we're going to watch it again, though. It's time for Ace of Predator replay as Contracts can't do anything here. Yeah, remember his flash is down from before when he had to flash the wall, and that is a great trophy there from Santorin and also a really good ultimate from Flame. Who Flame, that's using your priority in lane. He just comes down from the top side, lays down the carpet, 
and says, all right, he's going to have to cook here. Has no escape route because the flash being down. Still level three. About to change those. Going to get the second rip off respawn. Is this a, like, nine and a half minute, ten minute level six that may, might come through here? I, ooh. You can check. Centauri, they're already six, like you mentioned. So he's having a great time on Trundle. Going to even take this blue buff away as Contrax is relegated to taking the Krug camp on the bot half of the map. And this is, I think, a reason why Trundle is such a popular jungler. When he's good, he's just so reliable, right? Tantorin has so much flexibility between farming, ganking, and just applying general pressure. He also discourages people from selecting a tank in the draft because he can just shred them. Yep, do this. Pillar, subjugate. Lolo flashes. He will walk away. But Tantorin will be ready for next time. And Contrax, he's going to use that flash and that gank to go look for jungle scraps. What is there? There's a Grom. Might as well take it. Blue buff coming back up, but not going to be up in. Probably not time for him to look to take it here. Also, nope. the right side of pressure, because definitely a man are still pushing these minions towards the turret and keeping that nice, healthy CS lead. Yep. And I think these Raptors will get will get contracts that level 6 that he needs. So he's actually in a pretty good spot with his bottom lane pressure and being up in CS. And oh, Matt. Yeah, you cleanse down. You just cleanse because those chain of corruption would get. Matt gonna knock off. Really nice on a flame. Now forced to flash away. Flame flashes forward, looks for the harpoon, but doesn't land it. Ulti already down as well. That was a really good escape there from Golden Guardians. Matt commits with his W, then ease out, and they both blow the flash, get further away. That was actually great. That was the I will stop him, you go on ahead, and then he joins him. It's actually the perfect escape that you would want. So throwing here already on the blue buff. Golden Guardians happy to escape some of the early pressure. It does give FlyQuest Duo Lane a reprieve. Able to go back and shop. Looks like Cutlass now for Turtle. Is King going to grab this blue? And the way that Contracts gets back into the game now, is since he's hit that level 6, there's no flash on Flame or Teleport. He just committed for that bottom lane play. You go and you cover the top side of the map, and you go for a gank on Flame, who's been playing aggressive this entire time, against the Mundo. He has the wave clear advantage. He'll perpetually shove that lane. And then that gives you gank opportunities with your paranoia to get you back in and get the Mundo going as well, because Mundo is actually quite good into this composition, save for the Trundle. There's a lot of magic damage will come out, and he has to just build Spirit Visage first, and he's going to be sitting pretty. Yeah, right now looking pretty tanky for Lolo in the top side, and as you expected, Contrax is hanging back behind the wall, looking for a kind of classic Nocturne through the lane gank. Yeah, Flame sees this coming, says, "I'll just take Krugs." Doesn't have his jungler on the top side. In fact, jungler on the opposite side of the map. And they just saw, with that, I believe they saw the back there from Keen. I think so. They do see Santorin as well, who's just waiting for the Scry's Bloom to time out. Now Santorin looking to defend his own pink ward. Matt can't really pick this 1v1, but looks like Santorin is going to back off. Matt will get the control ward. Flame is like, let me get this safe CS in mid lane. He <laughs> comes down from the top side. It's like, please, please, I don't want to get ganked. And that, that's how scared he is, because he committed for that bottom play. But the Nocturne just really punishes blown flashes, whereas the Trundle doesn't really punish like a blown flash on Rakan. You can see Centurion, they're still hovering towards this bot side, because there are also no flashes on the Golden Guardian's duo lane. So yeah. I think it explains why they're playing further back towards their turret now. Yeah, got to watch out for Wild Turtle throwing down a Chain of Corruption, though. That's the big thing here. Because there's no flashes, it's kind of just throw it out. Ooh, walks up. Ooh, this is thing is nice. Charm is gonna land in. Matt actually zips around everyone. Fight screen and all. JJ dead before the Grey House can proc. Contract follow flashes there as the Roam Wolf is gonna seal Turtle's death. Bumption getting his first kill. And now Santorin flashing out of there. And that was a perfect counter there from the Golden Guardians. The TP from Bob Chin, and then Contracts sniffed it out, saw it coming, and had the ultimate ready to counter. And we thought that that topside pressure was coming. So did Flame and the rest of FlyQuest. But Contract's one step ahead there in bot lane. Yeah, he stayed up top and said, all right, I guess they're not going to give it to me. And then Flame was avoiding it so well that you can't just stay up there. So it was the perfect move from Contract to alternate and kind of find his jungle route and go to the bot side here. Miss from Wild Turtle on the ultimate onto Deathly. There's the arrow to stop JJ from using the gray health while he's tanking. And then that completely stuffs the dive. See. Keen can't even really get a part of it there. And then Santorin even just flashes over too. It's like, yeah. The miss is pretty big there. And then he blows his flash and Contracts didn't even have the tether broken and had ample time to just flash afterwards. Break there will go over. Yeah, better block that Q. Santorin steps in the way and 
Kaljek does go over to FlyQuest. As I do in your due diligence, make sure nothing can happen. Cover all the options, right. even if it's a low percentage chance. That's doing a good job of really testing his opponents this game, though. You can see he and definitely, despite again having no flashes, read that play well, able to defend and let the team swoop in to finish it off. Yeah. Still waiting for that first turret take, though, more than anything else. So Golden Guardian's actually with a decent gold lead thanks to those kills, but game's still very much close between the two teams. It looks like a swap coming through here. Um, even though no turret has been taken for first turret, they're trying to get a pressure advantage from FlyQuest side and just swap it and maybe catch them off guard and get damage on top turret. But this bottom turret is going to have a large minion wave there. Definitely also has teleport. And there he goes. He actually just TP straight there. He doesn't back first. Contract starting as blue buff. FlyQuest have many more people on the top half of the map. But definitely does actually base and TP here to make sure this tower stays safe. And Lolo now going to transfer it down to that bottom half of the map back in his 1v1 versus Flame. It's going to take him a while though. Gonna have to lug his way over there. And so far, Bob Chin, you know, just doing a status kind of update. Been doing quite well. Nope, oh, he pushed away Santorin early. In terms of keeping his lane safe, he's been good. But the Azir has the Nashers too. It's a little harder to be aggressive on. And at that point where Ryze has to kind of sit back and wait to scale with all the mana items. But can't wait too long. Here comes the Rift Herald. Definitely has Arrow. Golden Guardian. Flame, is, Flame is here. Badly. Flame is here. I don't know if they can though. Bob Shin is going to ward that out. But King's over. Looking for the scoop back. Does find it to the side. But now King going to get rooted up. And that actually might be a collapse or a kill. There's Contract going to dive in onto the Azir. Looks for it. He really wants a match. He's going to try to find the combo. Find the three man charm in a knock. And that's going to force King to flash away. The equalizer though turns it all the way back around for FlyQuest. Flame with the equalizer. Aptly named as it turns the whole fight around. That was so well done there. From pretty much everybody, we saw them go in. JJ says, no, you can't kill Keen. Matt says, no, we're going to kill you guys. Groups them all up. As soon as Flame has control, he throws it down. Let's see that one more time here. Keen doesn't quite get the perfect scoop. Pushes Bob Chin off to the side, who then speeds away with the combo. And then because he chunked him to half, Contract sees the opportunity, gets close, pull him into the belly. Arrow into Charm, into the Charm again onto Flame. And then as soon as he has control, he just overheats with the Flame Spitter, and he has the ultimate down. That's so much damage to come across. And FlyQuest get a few kills, and equalize the gold right back up. We are dead even. And none of them go to that Flame. Exchange. That's one of those ones where you go, man, I did so much work. Where are my kills? Just two, two assists more for him. I think he'll take it. Maybe not, though. Flame does like to secure those kills. Really likes to secure those kills. We saw him try to flash the harpoon earlier just to get the slow and make a kill happen. And then he had to play defensive for it. Like, the guy is not afraid of making aggressive plays, that is for sure. Certainly not. FlyQuest, you now they're the ones that have to look to contest for this Herald, but Lobstrom chasing away Santorin. JJ trying to put some walls up and flank around the side. Maybe it's my fight here. Or if the back opens up the back, the back, the back, the back. Good stopwatch. That goes over. Contract should be able to get it, but I think it'll be forfeit. Devoured up by JJ. That's going to be a kill for the Tom Kench. Oh, JJ. All king. Boost away to mid. Bob's trying to get away. Combo again. Runs out. Throwing cues as he retreats back towards the outer turret. That was so close. That was 74 HP after they hit the eye the last time. I think the smite from Contract and maybe the auto came through right then. He does pick it up. He does secure it before he dies. But that's still a death there. If they can't convert that into a turret before first turret goes down here, FlyQuest, it looks like they're surrounding. Yeah, they're surrounding this top turret. It's the one that they really want to get here. Pretty low, so not a, not a bad take here for FlyQuest. Smart to stay grouped and try and get the objectives, because despite you know some kill exchanges here, objectives have still really been up for grabs. It is FlyQuest, though, that will grab the first objective. They take down the turret in top. Yep, get themselves that extra gold. It is split across three people, so it's not just one person kind of boarding it all. And Bob Chin is left to pick up this wave, and there's a lot of teleports here for the side of Golden Guardians, those three, whereas FlyQuest, they're more teamfight oriented. They have to have the fight start, kind of avoid fights with Tom Kench, and rotate, and make things happen for them. And, oh, I'm looking at contracts. This is one of those games where you go 0 and 3, you had a really bad start on the Nocturne because of the jungle, your momentum is low, and he's going for, I believe, the Black Cleaver here, so it's not even like a Duskblade or an aggressive build to kind of pop somebody. But he also can't really pop anybody here because he has to worry about the Tom Kench, who's just going to 
gobble somebody up, cycle through with Spellbook, maybe you have Heal, maybe you have Exhaust, so he, it is kind of a, uh, I would say a big counter with the Tom Catch. Again, we saw Jeff's arrow also miss for the same reason, but Golden Guardian's gonna have to look for something here around the next Drake, 30 seconds until the Inferno will spawn. Blacklist are gonna extend that gold lead. They're almost at 2k. Yeah. Contract grabs the red, and both teams set up for the next objective. Yeah, but Bob Chin is top lane. He's got teleport. He's free to push this turret and basically say, I will TP down to this fight if it happens. But I'm pretty sure that Golden Guardians, they play this right. They're pretty much guaranteed a top turret, and they'll have to trade for this bottom one to do so. Blacklist playing smart here. Let's put the pressure down. While well, Turtle should be able to finish this off. Bob Chen looks to get this, should be easy. Yep, nobody has TP to match it though. So Bob Chen's actually a ticking time bomb. So, oh, they're actually gonna keep pushing. That's how they're gonna try to counter Bob Chen. Is FlyQuest are saying, ah, base race. You wanna, wanna have one in 18 minutes? Throw down? All right, Rift Herald mid, so maybe it could be even more racing happening here. Will be a trade. Bob Chen's still going, and looks like FlyQuest fell back to the Infernal Drake. The Golden Guardians will get some turrets here. The Infernal goes over, Abyssal Voyage gonna move most of FlyQuest towards the middle of the map. Yep, trying to prevent another charge from getting off. I don't think they'll kill her in time. Oh, nope. Bob Chin's doing work on the top side too, and they're clearing the jungle. I don't think this turret goes down, does it? Nope. They weren't, they weren't able to rotate up there in time. And so that's actually two turrets for two turrets overall. Yeah, Guardians don't stick around for a potential fight. They just put Lolo back to now harass the outer turret in bot lane. But even with Golden Guardians worth, trading's not too bad there. Yeah, I do feel like that mid turret is so important though, so Golden Guardians will have pretty easy access to that side lane turret. But now they have to watch out in that bottom half of the map being such a long lane. Let's see if Lolo's safe down there. Okay. Oh. He is Dr. Mundo, so. He'll, he'll be very safe. Yeah, I th I think especially after the early pressure he did feel. In the landing phase, not particularly afraid of flame right now. Yeah. I think at this point, despite the good Merlot purchase, is just looking to aid in team fights more than anything else. Always just like, all right, take the turret if you let me. Yep, Mundo, a tank that beats you in split push if you are a mage. So just builds full magic resistance, and then you can see the coverage too. Flame is actually playing really well um, in terms of he's backing up when he doesn't know exactly what's going on. So you see the vision coverage from Golden Guardians on the bottom half of the map there in the enemy jungle. That's what makes him back up. He knows that it's all darkness there. They'll probably play to that side. It's just like when he thought the contracts would gank him because he had no flash. So Flame is playing situationally when it's ambiguous and you don't know what's going on. He's playing actually pretty reserved and it's working out for him because otherwise he's going to end up dead. The thing you said though where Blackwest really do need to play pretty front to back and find team fights to open up this game for themselves. Golden Guardians are going to make that tough here in the mid game between the Mundo, the Nocturne, and the Rise. Just better front line for sure. Brought better front line, uh, more engaged on the side of Golden Guardians. But also 1-3-1. Yeah. The ability to pull FlyQuest across the map. TP in, that's definitely. Actually has two items now, so finishes Hurricane off the Blade of the Ruined King. Could make farming up to item number three that much easier. Now, this is kind of that annoying Ash build where you can slow multiple people. And I actually think it's still in the game where if you have Runan's Hurricane and you activate your Q, uh, the bolts will acquire different targets. So normally Runan's can only hit two, but I'm pretty sure you can hit five people at a time as Ash with Q on and Runan's. That one I did not know about. Yeah, it's because the Q is like so many tiny little bolts yeah. and it just randomly acquires them. So you end up hitting five people. You do the same uh, amount of bolts. But you hit five people. Oh, he, he tried Realm Warp. Yeah, he tried to interrupt Realm Warp. Figured it out. Whenever someone does something silly, check for flash and ultimate cooldowns, people. Yeah, I, it. I love like this little game where it's like I wasn't looking for a second, and then you look, you try to use the context clues of what happened. You're like almost reverse engineering you detective work. Yeah. Put your little plaid hat on. Sherlock pastry. <laughs> Gotta compete with Medius and Medius That's across true. the pond. Medius and Betty. All right, definitely with the hook shot, finds two channeling in a brush. I'll get back safely though. Yep, but he still knows that people were backing there, and so it's not as uh, bad of an area, and they get to cover the bottom half. So now, warding for the split push. Name of the game here, Matt's gonna put some deeper wards. Keep him safe. Looks like covering Lolo right now. Bofrin is still just hanging out in the top lane, 
being a, a nuisance here for FlyQuest. Remember that turret had actually taken about half of its HP too on the tier two, so. Nope. Didn't quite check the Baron Pit, so it doesn't see that ward. Yeah, he's a nicely placed control ward there for FlyQuest, so. Golden Guardians. Total map pressure, not feeling as good, but just looking at where people are sitting on the minimap right now, it does feel like with the game looking even, Golden Guardians are actually the ones with a pressure lead. The turrets have even back up, the kills are pretty close. Yes, two Drakes is very nice for FlyQuest. It'll be another one they can play for in a minute 45, but again, we've seen Rise now. It feels like two games in a row just do his thing where he sticks in a side lane and never wants to leave, and it can be very tough to deal with. Yeah, because the other mid laners aren't taking teleport or have the split push to match him or the safety, so. It's actually a kind of bleed you out strategy. And if you get a Baron, you get to 1 3 1. And I'm really liking this so far from Golden Guardians. The fact that they're down in objectives, it's not, and it even kills. Like, I don't think, like you said, it's affecting their pressure much. FlyQuest will have some opportunities to exploit it. But if Golden Guardians actually play this right, I think they have way more pressure to actually exert on the map with the Mundo forcing teleports and the Mundo forcing kind of flame to want to join team fights. Whereas Bob Chin will also be able to just play the rise and kind of force the hand. And there's not enough vision in the game to cover everything anymore. Yeah. If, however, a team fight is found for FlyQuest, and two items for Azir and Varas, I mean, it be pretty straightforward. And I want to touch on that. Like, the way they start team fights is Chain of Corruption, Keen either commits to it, or you maybe have Flame throw down an equalizer, right? So you have three kind of not very reliable tools that have to hit true. Whereas Golden Guardians, they have it in spades. They have Roots, they have the ultimate from Nocturne, they have the uh, they have the Ash Arrow, and then they have Matt, who a lot of people, it's so hard doing, so hard to avoid and engage from Rakan. His commitment is pretty low too, because he can get right out, but if Golden Guardians want to engage, they'll engage very, very quickly. Whereas FlyQuest, it's not as easy for them. And we talked about the strength of Tom Kench being able to save you know, some of those problems, or a lot of them, but probably not all of them at the same time. Yeah. The Golden Guardians can stagger their crowd control effectively. Yeah, you can't fit four people in your mouth when they all get charmed. That is accurate. Yeah. Be a chubby bunny skin for Tom Kench. All right, glad to up here for FlyQuest. Looks like they will take it. Golden Guardians just happy to continue their total map pressure. The contract's also going to spend some gold by the looks of things. Black Cleave is likely done. The FlyQuest do get Drake number three. Golden Guardians are definitely waving the flag on that one. Yep, surrender that one away for Dax and Pressure on the top side. So, we find ourselves here 25 minutes in. I know I said TSM was playing slow last game, but I think maybe it's just Rise's fault, actually. <laughs> you think it's Rise's? Maybe. Hmm. Well, he does want to just split push. You kind of see the objectives elsewhere for Pressure here. You see FlyQuest group is five because Flame had pushed bottom. Window has to answer. FlyQuest now grouped up saying, I'm going to call this and say, it's time to go. Look at how much damage they do to this, too. Yeah, I think a lot of what Golden Guns were able to do is because of that mid tower, but now it's going to Antoran under fire. Matt with a big jump, find and find the knockout, gets back to contract safely. Whoa. But Keen actually gets him, somehow snaps him down. Bob Chin has TP'd over, but now he's got to play Wave Clear duty. I actually have zero clue. I heard the, sh the soldier. Oh, is maybe the turret shot? Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see it again. Sherlock Pastry, help me out. <laughs> That's a turret, though, for not FlyQuest. That good. This turret does fall in mid lane once again. FlyQuest's not done. 10 minutes, 10 seconds, excuse me, until Matt is back up. And looks like FlyQuest will finally pull away. Yeah, Matt went for the hard engage there. Went really hard on that engage. And they, they were ready for it. They kind of said, as soon as he goes, we're just going to turn on him. And he got burst down. And JJ was also very ready to just gobble up whoever his target was. A little bit out of the charm range. I wonder if JJ had an ignite. I'm like looking down, I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's just look now. Let's see this here. Santorin gets hit. Oh, Take it all back. wait. Contracts, looking for Keen. Here's, Here's the Zeta, try and save him. The old actually misses Contract, I think Spell Shield did. Wait. They're gonna flash forward, Dustbringer, able to grab the kill into Azir, but JJ has devoured off one, but Matt's flashing forward. Then Brutal Wild, turn up a flame, turns it back around and takes down Contracts. Matt burning down low, is looking to fall next as Bob Chin also down to Wild Turtle. That's so much damage from Flame. He just throws down the Equalizer again. These Equalizers are just shredding all of Golden Guardians, save for Lorlo. Golden Guardians try and play that one really quickly to get the jump. They do kill Keen as a result, but now it's definitely on Lorlo versus four from Fly and the Baron. Yeah, just let the Baron do a little bit of damage to him. Lorlo has a full this, HP. This is the Quadra? Hold on. Yeah. Wait, that, that was the ultimate from Santorin, just to heal up and kind of 
Get away, and they aren't even going to contest it. It's not a quadra, Irene. It's a Baron for FlyQuest. Keen will not get the buff, but that doesn't matter. No jungler means no contest for Golden Guardians. Let's see. Ulti's off of, I believe, the Hawk shot. Goes in. It's the fear. Matt wants to go in after. Keen flashes away from JJ. He flashes away from the Tom Kench. If you're a Tom Kench player, you, you hate to see that, but look at that. That... Oh, and the pillar to boot. That's such a well-placed pillar, too, because it forced Bob Chin back around to step back onto the hot lava. And you talk about it, you know, not super reliable CCs between the Trundle Pillar and the Equalizer, but you put them together, feels like a hard CC when you're stuck in there burning away. <laughs> yeah, it's one that you kind of have to subject yourself to. It's like, where do I go? Yeah, he has to go down. Back to the fountain, usually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the fact that Flame is at that point where he didn't even have to buy spell pen boots, he wanted the, uh, the Merc Treads here, has the Void Staff, has the penetration available to him, and he just does so much damage. Remember, Equalizer was buffed a while ago that if you're standing on it for that long, it is just doing so much there. Oh, I think I think his damage stats are going to be pretty crazy this game. And remember when I said it felt like Golden Guardians were winning? That one mid out of tower really turned this whole game around. It felt like Flyquist had so much more control. They're now playing much faster around the map, and they've got a very healthy gold lead to boot. So, yep. Golden Guardian is going to have to try and defend two minutes of Baron Siege. They weren't able to have the 1 3 1 work on Golden Guardian's side, and then Flyquest throw down a oh, Nadal. He flashed with the Teddy Corruption, but it's still found two carries. Contract's dead, Matt's dead as well. And he's going to fall on bot side. FlyQuest, they can sense those playoffs. This is a game that all puts them into the playoffs here. They're gonna take down Nexus turret on the right-hand side. Three up still for Golden Guardians, who are trying to defend, but the push is too strong here for FlyQuest. The Nexus is exposed. They will be making playoffs. Golden Guardians trying to repel them out of their base, but it will not matter. Keen wails on the Nexus, and FlyQuest get to 10 magical wins. FlyQuest will have a postseason. 10 wins, gets them the playoffs, and they look forward to tomorrow where they play Cloud9. And because 100 Thieves and Cloud9 and FlyQuest are all sitting at this 10 win area, getting 11 wins potentially gets you a first round buy. FlyQuest could still end the split second place. Yep, it's been an interesting summer, Zyrie. <laughs> But it's certainly been a fun one as the teams will shake hands. FlyQuest have done so much hard work to get to this spot. Interesting summer, still not over yet. That's true. We got uh, one more game and then five more tomorrow, and then maybe even some after that. Yep, the tiebreakers played on Monday. Potentially. You see Flame having a ball on that one. Oh, yeah. Whatever. All smiles. Yeah, I mean, we can tell why he's been, you know, taking the rumble whenever it's up. Done a lot of work on that one here. <laughs> Had some really good team fight ultimates there. Didn't pop off in the damage as much as I thought he would, but at the same time, that was one where he shows up to the fight, he does his job, and even turns some fights around that looked like the Rakan was just going to get the best of it. Yeah, it did feel like Golden Guardians were looking uh, good, but unfortunately for them, Flyquest do pick up the win as we're going to send it down to the analyst desk to break down the game. Thank you very much, gentlemen. For the first time this weekend, we get to fold the folding Dude, sheet this is as the tough opposed one. to tear it. But we got that fly quest victory here, so we can fold it right down the middle of the possibilities. I'm feeling really good, actually. This is the whole day of We are narrowing correct. in on your scenario. Yeah. I mean, there was I had to one. four red side games. That's the thing. With all these other weeks where blue side wins everything, red side. Yeah. I mean, back. I had the same things as you, just the one difference. Except for the one that was not the same. I mean, wrong. so here we are. We are, you know, we are we're <laughs> narrowing yes, in, Jack. guys. This foldy sheet is small at this point, but fly quest. Moving to 10 and 7. This was a huge victory for them, although an expected victory. Again, the idea that they had to secure it in order to make sure that they yeah. qualify into playoffs, a huge leap for this organization. Uh, it's a very nice turnaround for them. I don't think anyone saw this coming. Jay was talking about how he had them power ranked 10th. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do it with a different draft uh, than we've seen out of them. I think Keen on the Azir is something that he has played a fair amount of in the past. It's not very meta right now, although we apparently are starting yeah. to see it more. Uh, and he had a really great game on it all around. But uh, they did have some struggles this game. And what was interesting as well is they were never really pressured to do anything. So uh, Wild Turtle whiffed two Varus ultimates um, in pretty bad ways that actually lost them a lot of pressure. Uh, and the fact that they were making these plays is good. The fact that they weren't executing these plays makes you not super excited about the team. But then 
even after missing all these things, it's not like the game was ever in real depth. Yeah, but this is the kind of thing that you're really concerned at looking at playoffs, because yeah. this is the kind of play that you need to execute on. This should be at least one kill, maybe two, and you start blowing the game open. Same thing happens in a bot lane dive. Yeah. Woof. Woof. And then from here on, I mean, this would have got collapsed on pretty poorly anyways. It might have turned bad, but you at least would have traded back probably one kill. And here instead, you're just going to lose two for that play. And that's after they absolutely obliterated contracts in the early game. He right. level five, level yeah. three, dying on his wolves. And that's the kind of thing where you look at that and you say, like, you make those mistakes versus TL, versus C9, you're going to have a rough time in playoffs. Yeah. To that end, though, they really did destroy contracts. Yeah, like, without yeah. a doubt. I mean, there's still a lot of high points <laughs> in this was, game. I, I'm being negative. He wasn't level six until around nine minutes, and his vision score at the end of the game was 19. The second, second lowest. second lowest of the split. I believe the lowest was X Smithy, and that might have been in like their 20 minute against loss. Against Guardians, against funnily Guardians. enough, when they got hard smashed, but in a much yeah. substantially longer game. Not only did he have a low vision score by virtue of comparison to other junglers, he was the lowest in the game itself, even yeah. losing to his own laner. He could never sweep wars because if he tried, he'd always die. He was gold starved on Nocturne. He's not one of the junglers who actually transitions gracefully to a low econ build. You need damage, otherwise you are useless. Mm -hmm. So it, overall, I'm actually really relatively happy with the FlyQuest win aside. I was going to say, we just showed a replay where FlyQuest botches a couple yeah. good decisions, but now I want to take a look at the moments in the game where they do execute well, uh, most notably here in the mid lane. Yeah, Keen has a really nice scoop on the Bob Chin to start things off, but they don't have enough follow-up to get to him, and then this is just a really nice reaction to the attempted counter-engage, able to pick up the Azir, get him out, then have a nice rumble equalizer once a lot of the cooldowns and gap closers are burned, so they're able to just destroy the two frontline members of Rakan and Nocturne, who went in, and uh, you see that the game did start slipping out of their hands a little bit around that mark, but then the 15-minute fight happens, and it's exactly the kind of stuff you want to see, being able to quickly dismantle a non-playoff team. Yeah. We just want to be a little cleaner. I do want to also challenge some of the other coaches in the North American LCS. This is the fourth game in a row that FlyQuest has played Rumble, Trundle, and Tom Kench. What's it is, point? very much so. They're a little bit predictable. I think earlier on in the split, they went on their surge because they just picked Braum Varus every game until someone Somebody disrupted banned them. It or disrupted so I think St. Vicious yeah. has done a very good job with this team. Teaching JJ and getting him better at Tom Kench, that's a power pick for them right now. Yep. Trundle's also a power pick. Rumble's also a power pick. Like, just th that's the type of thing that you question of whether or not it transitions to best of five. Exactly, right? They've isolated, you know, a couple winning formulas, but if those start getting knocked down by game two, game three, game four of a best of five, you start running out of options and there will be some yeah. questions about their performance yeah. in that playoff series. We had an academy series last night where the team went in prepped like, we're going to play Rakan all the time. They lose two games on Rakan. They're like, okay, uh -oh. we're doing something else now. And it can be very difficult mid-series to adapt to that stuff. But I think with what good work St. Vicious has done so far, I have right. faith in them in a the best of five. Down the stretch, you yeah. want to get those wins though, secure your and position in playoffs. So you're going to use the best strategy to I do it. I can't blame him for picking the winning formula. <laughs> Right, right exactly. I mean, old C9 <laughs> used to be like that, where it's like, well, there's Rumble, Ash, Zyra, every uh, yeah. game. All right. Well, it's important to note the foldy sheet will, uh, foldy sheet rather. <laughs> whoops. Uh, we'll, st <laughs> uh, we'll stall out here as the fifth game of the day is not relevant to yeah. playoff pictures. So we're going to put this on hold for the remainder of the day. To hear more about that game, let's send it over to Avli in the interview lounge. Thanks, guys. I'm here with both Flame and Joanne. Flame, congratulations on that win. How far FlyQuest has come. Now, when you guys were sitting in ninth place last split, were you ever thinking that come summer you guys were going to lock in playoffs? Uh, um, so I, I never, it never crossed my mind that we wouldn't make playoffs, um, you know, thinking about this split, um, you know, in like, in, aside from like one year from my entire professional career, I've never not made finals or playoffs um, or made it to Worlds. So, um, you know, we, we always thought we'd gonna, we were going to make it to playoffs. And you guys really put in that hard work. So what was keeping you guys going through the ups and downs of FlyQuest? Uh, I think... Uh, for everyone, like a turtle, uh, we have like a lot of, uh, we have uh, both language last, last season. Like uh, we only, we don't have translator and uh, using co speaking Korean person now. Just uh, I think he's really play uh, better than last split uh, after just uh, 
five, almost five native player. And the other new players like Lucas and Kin and JJ, uh, they are really good attitude and good personality. And so usually our atmosphere and feedback is really good. So it sounds like you're friends with a lot of the players on your team. Who do you think you have the best relationship wise in terms of game and house synergy? Uh, 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 I think I just, I don't know, like special someone, but usually I just uh, try to be close with everyone. Our, every guy is so good guys. So yeah, I like our team. Well, we're all good guys, and all of you guys are going into playoffs together, and preparation has to start immediately. So how are you guys going to approach it? Are we in the playoffs? How are you going to prepare for No matter what, or we play off or just a regular season, we just try to do the same thing. And I just like on play for more like PO5. It's really, I mean, really exciting to play. Well, I'm wishing you the best of luck going into those. Congratulations again, and thank you, both of you. And there is one more game before we call it a day. Clutch Gaming goes against Counter Logic Gaming. So we'll see you here after this. There's the rumble off the ability, but there's an all is good. First blood over to Santora, and time is going to land in. Matt actually zips around everyone. Fight three and all. JJ dead before the Grey House can proc. Contract follow flashes there at the roam off. It's going to seal Turtle's death. Bump Shin. Come back, come back. We win, we win, we win. Come on, knock Frontline, 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 frontline. Wait, wait, wait. You keep going. Matt's flashing forward. Then Rudig while Turtle but Flame turns it back around and takes down Contract's Matt. Burning down low is looking to fall next as Bump Shin also down to Wild Turtle. The push is too strong here for FlyQuest. The Nexus is exposed. They win. Be making playoffs. If meat and bread are the backbone of a sub, then Mike's Way is the heart and soul. Lettuce and tomatoes, onions and spices, all drizzled in the juice. That's the difference. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above.